Greetings, class, and welcome to what they may very well be the most boring of the videos that uh, I subject you to. But that's okay because you're going to make exciting videos, and that's the purpose of this tutorial is to help you to make exciting videos, starting with your first assignments or, or suggestions or missions, should you choose to accept it, dun, 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 which is to let me take on the burden of creating the relational summary, the lecture, and setting up the lights in front of the green screen in the Digital Media Commons in the library, or you can set one up at home, and videotaping myself reading the script of the relational summary or lecture on a teleprompter, and then uh, chopping out or, or taking um, uh, cropping the sides where the light of the green screen may be uneven, and then turning it into an MP4, so that you ha and editing it down all takes so that you have a coherent relational summary or lecture, and then giving it to you. So what you're going to see in each of the areas in each of the modules is the first edit, like the cropping and the editing of the sections to a complete lecture of TED Talk length between 15 and 20 minutes. That's the thing we shoot for for lecture style relational summaries. Yours don't have to be that long, but what you're going to do first in this course is spend the first month of the course working in teams to edit images behind me in my lecture and in the foreground that bring the lecture to life, that illustrate and explicate and annotate what I say. You augment the podcast nature of the video by removing and replacing the green screen with images that provide greater content and then put foreground images in that further illustrate what I'm saying and then put in text and put in sound effects, and put in um, music, all those things. That's your task for the first four weeks. And each group of you will take on one video per week and there should be four groups of you so that each week we can complete four of the lecture videos and then by the end of the first four weeks of the class, we should have all 16 relational summary lecture videos illustrated for you to consume. And the way that we're going to look at them is the first week, each of you is uh, going to be on a team that tackles videos one, two, three, and four, lectures one, two, three, and four. And then the second week, we're going to show in class lectures one and two completed. We'll keep lectures three and four completed in abeyance. The next week, you're going to edit together uh, lectures five, six, seven, eight, but we'll show in class the lecture three. And then the next week, we'll show lecture four, but you're going to be editing lectures nine, 10, 11, 12. And then the following week, we'll show lecture four, and you will continue editing lectures 13, 14, 15, and 16. Then you're done, all of you, uh, illustrating the lectures, and then we can watch them sequentially each week. Week 5 will watch Lecture 5, Week 6 will watch Lecture 6, and so on. But uh, you need to learn how to do that, and it's, um, it's time-consuming, but conceptually it's not all that difficult. It's also very creative and can be a whole lot of fun, and the thing you should remember is that the more that you do this, the more you will learn deeply what the lecture is about, because as you encounter unfamiliar concepts and vocabulary, and then you work to illustrate them and to find text and images that to life, you will of necessity study. And the time it takes to do it is reinforcement studies, sitting there and repeating, and it really embeds it in your consciousness. When you work on a video of a lecture, and you illustrate it, you become the master of those concepts. Trust me, um, it's how I learn a lot of what I learn, and I didn't want to deprive you of that. I've edited so many of my own videos and so many other people's videos. I was working in Hollywood as a video editor. I realized back then that the editing process and the visualization process, envisioning what the lecture is about, really locks in that content. It's the best way to study I can possibly imagine, whereas if I do all the illustrating for you, I do all the learning, and you watch it once and whatever sits in your head, sits in your head. And then if you really want to learn it, you'll have to go back and read the script again and underline it and highlight it and then make notes in the margins. And then you'll have to uh, try to memorize and you'll have to watch the video again, listen to the podcast again. And that kind of studying gets really boring. 
and it's hard to carve out the time. But when you're in a production mode and you're actually co-producing a project, you really become the master of that project and effortlessly study as you go hunting and gathering for images, hunting and gathering for motion pictures to put in, for sounds to put in, for the appropriate music, as you listen over and over to the lecture and you start hunting for uh, illustrations of the vocabulary and concepts and start typing in the text that annotates it. That's study. That's really exciting study. It's a great way to do it. And I wish that, that more schools would offer this method of using video production, bringing textbooks and bringing lectures to life as the primary means of study. I'm going to give it a try, but I'll show you how we do it. Um, when we're in Camtasia, and if you're using Adobe Premiere, it's going to be very similar because most of these programs are, are, are very, very uh, similar in their way they operate. Some of the bells and whistles are on different menus, but basically works the same. The first thing you're going to do is import media, and there's usually a media bin. And <clears throat> let, me, um, let me just pause here and, and plop that in so you can see that what I've just recorded, how that goes in. Okay, so looky there, that's what I just recorded. There I am talking, and there's me pointing to stuff on the screen, and I can, of course, manipulate my image and make it as big or small as I want and move it around. So I can put myself right in here if I like. If I hold the Shift key down, I can change the aspect ratio. If you don't put the Shift key down, then the whole thing just grows at the same time. But if you want to have it fit a window like I do here, hold the Shift key down, and then you can stretch discrete sides. I didn't know that at first, so... I made it uh, that made it a little hard so yes yeah, so there um, that this track here that I'm on this one is actually the highlighted track that you can see down here where the yellow bar is if I click on this one and make this yellow this one is the background as you can see so I'm gonna hit control Z get that back where it was and so this is what I used before, so that, so that you have a coherent. So there's the timeline. This is called the timeline down here. Greetings, Greetings class, class, and welcome, welcome to, to what day day may very well be the most boring. boring. See that? So that is how a uh, basic video uh, software interface works. Down here there are tracks, and I've got tracks one and tracks two. You can add as many tracks as you like. So I'm going to add, insert a track, and insert it below, above. Sorry, there's track three. I'm going to click down here and I'm going to insert a track below, insert track below, and it goes down there. And so I have now a track in each one. Okay. And so you can make as many tracks as you like. You can put audio waveforms in, you can put in video, you can put images. We'll look at that. So now that I've recorded that first section, let's take a look at how we actually edit uh, a video lecture. So here in the media bin, where we are, it's media, you also have library, you've got annotations, behaviors, animations, cursor effects, voice narration, audio effects, visual effects, interactivity, and captions. So a lot of different stuff here. But in the media bin, I'm going to add, by clicking on this plus sign, um, I'm going to add a another piece of media. I'm going to import media, and I'm going to go in, into a... Uh, into a folder which is Camtasia and here I have all my lectures now you'll see them in canvas online uh, what the lectures look like but I'm going to take them right from here and I'm going to take Envisioning Envis Envis Sustainability Lecture 1 which is the first one you're going to work on and I have an mp4 file uh, that's what you're going to download it as I have it in a folder but you're going to download the lecture and the lecture will come in to the media bin and there it is. And when you see that lecture, you drag it down onto one of the tracks. I can use track two. The reason I'm using track two is because the green screen underneath it is going to be replaced by what's behind it on track one. So there is track two with my lecture. So you see, there's like two bits there. There's what I recorded before, which is here, which is two tracks. It is me. Uh, talking, which is this one here, as I mentioned, that's on one track, and another piece of video, which is this one here, that's on the bottom track. Now we get to the actual lecture, and so we have just one track of me and the audio. 
the audio you can see is a wave form. There it is down here. And if I go to edit audio by right clicking, can you see a green bar? And if I move it down, now the audio is soft. I'm thinking, imagining the past and the future and making them appear present in the mind. Or I can raise it up and I can make it really loud. Thinking out loud, speaking, yeah, singing. Speaking, or speaking out loud. But I don't want it to be that loud. So you play with the audio that way. And you can even do fade ins and fade outs. We can get to that later. I'm going to make this a little smaller. But I hope that gives you an idea of the fact that this is a combined video and audio track. You can uncombine them. You can go separate audio and video if you right click and click on them. And then one of the tracks has video. And you can see that has a little uh, picture down there. And one of the tracks has audio. And you can manipulate the audio. That way, if you wanted to remove the audio, you could just delete it. And then when you hit play, then it would be a mime. And then if you uh, eliminate the video, then you just have writing, drawing, painting, sculpting. And you can still manipulate the audio as I showed by lifting the Thinking out even louder. The problem is that if you separate the audio and the video and they get out of sync, that is, if you slip this over here, then you're going to see Radio, film, and television. weird things like and that, like one of these loudest, virtual reality old Japanese work. movies where people talked and said things like, look out. The king is going to shoot you. And the mouths move differently. So, yeah, you want to make sure they're synced up. And the best way to do that is to just keep them uh, keep them synced. But it really becomes your preference. I'm going to hit Control Z and put it back together. And there you have it, them back together. So I don't worry about them coming undone, unsynced, synchronized. All right. So the first thing you're going to do when you're editing a lecture of mine actually is to come, I usually start in black somewhere and I go to some kind of transition, usually a fade, and drop it down on the track. And then um, what will happen is it'll go from black, which is that gap, and it'll fade in like that. Um, note that you can stretch and squash these to make uh, them longer. If I pull this, then I have take two. Week one. it much bigger. And if I scrunch it down, then I see the entire thing on the timeline Thinking and little itty bitty, itty, itty bitty uh, audio waveforms. So you play with that a lot, the size of the, of the timeline so that you can get more precise edits. If you have this, like you can tell right here between this peak, let me actually, I go to edit audio and raise it up a bit so you can see. So notice between this peak and this peak of the waveform, there's nothing. So I'm actually shutting my mouth here. And so you see if I start before this peak. 1.1. Cogito. 1.1 Cogito. 1.1. There it is. 1.1. See that eight waveform? 1.1 with those peaks. Then there's this pause, and then I go Cogito Ergo Sum. Cogito Ergo Sum. There's cogito ergo sum. That waveform is the words cogito ergo sum. There's the k g t t u sum. There's my mouth went m sum. And there's one point one. So you can actually annotate these if you want to. So if you put your cursor over it and get a little plus, then you can write in the marker and click on it. I think I can click on it and I can go one. Ooh, it didn't work. I have to click on this again. They're renamed. And uh, oh, it's up here. And then go 1.1. 1. 1. And you see down here 1.1. 1. 1. And then if I wanted to, I could do the same thing here. Come into this waveform, click on that little button, go up there and go cogito ergo sum. And then we'd know, looking at the waveform, what parts of the lecture we're at. This marker got in the way, didn't mean to put that in, so I'm going to delete it. So you could do that, you could annotate it. Now watch when I scrunch it down how those words come really tightly together because those are the words 1.1 cookie tour or sum, but meep, there they are. So you can do markers for specific parts. Like if you want to know like what is this part here? Without an appreciation for what that should be the beginning of the lecture. Awareness. Without Okay, so that's where the lecture begins with that part of the waveform. So I put that in and I'm gonna say lecture starts. And then I have that, so when I do my uh, scrunching, I can see 
where the lecture starts. Down there, this is all the front piece. Verbal awareness, take two. Week one, thinking lecture. Okay, so there's that little fade. I can click on the fade and I can make it a little longer if you want to come in slower. Module 1.1, the mind. I can make it really, really long over the whole thing. Module 1.1, the mind's eye and non awareness, take two. Week one, Way thinking too lecture. slow, so of course we don't want to do that. So you find a sort of happy medium of where you want it to, how quickly you want it to come in. Module 1.1, the mind's eye and non determined by this yellow band. So and that turns green when you click off. Module 1.1, the mind's eye and nonverbal okay. awareness, take two. Now the other thing you're going to do is because I've given you me lecturing on top of a green screen and I cropped out all of the bad green because you need really even green colors. So I lit the studio so that behind me there were no shadows and you can actually see the wall down here uh, where it was painted. Um, but there's no shadows, and then there were shadows and light spots, and there were objects, the lights themselves, on this side. So I cropped it out using this crop tool. And you're going to have to do the same thing now, um, but you have a better definition of where to crop it because you have uh, you have this just green box. You want to get rid of the black. Now, when you're doing this cropping, if you're doing it in front of a black screen, you're not going to know what's behind you. So what I like to do when I start doing this editing is I like to go and bring in a background. And they don't have uh, backgrounds per se in here. Let me see if we can look in the library. Maybe they do music tracks, outros, lower third, motion background. Is a motion background? Yeah, they have it. Um, but I'm not going to use this, but let's just put it in just for the sake of it. I'm going to put broken dots in. And there it is. There's the broken dots. Um, what they're going to look like behind me. So I'm going to drag that into the track underneath me, as you can see. And it doesn't come in as long as we'd like, so we'd have to put in a bunch more times. But it's going to give me a reference, because now it is beneath where I am. And note that the camera, as if uh, when we render this, it's going to be like we're taking a picture of a picture. And this gray um, triangle here is actually the lens, like the lens of a camera pointing down. That line shows pointing down. It means it's going to record what's on top before it records what's on the bottom. So if I were, for example, to put in um, put in icons, let's say I take an apartment or a farm, and I drop that in above, notice that this gray arrow or, or arrow gum pointing down is seeing the farm. And then if I go up and manipulate that farm, oops, I'm still in crop mode. Let me go back to point mode. Um, I can manipulate that farm. Then that farm is floating above me. And I can be that monster from all of your nightmares, Mr. Farmhead, Mr. Barnhead, Mr. Barnwall. There's people named Mr. Barnes. Okay, so I could be Mr. Barnes here. I can get it to center. And you can have fun with, with that kind of thing. Ooh, and spin it around and whatnot. Anyway, that's just to give you the idea that I can be the barn head. Nudge it up a little bit. The barn's on the top of the neck. All right. So there's Mr. Barnhead. And the barn is only going to be above me when the camera is looking down over this barn track. Underneath is me, and then behind me is this, um, this great, uh, as you can see if I move this over, this great uh, miasmic moving background, but you're not going to see that moving background when it's covered over by me. So when I crop, and you hit the crop tool, and I crop this track, and you can see I've made it highlighted in yellow by selecting it. This one here is now the one that's active. This one's active. Now the barn is active. It doesn't show up because the camera's not over it, but there's the barn being active. Whatever one I select and turn yellow is the one I'm working on. If you don't want to make mistakes with the with any other track, then you want to lock it. It's a little lock thing. Now I lock that and I lock the barn track and the only track that's active is track two. Now I can't move the barn and I can't move the background. I can only move my track that I'm on because it's unlocked. So with my track unlocked and everything else locked, and what I'm going to do is go to crop, and I'm going to crop, knowing I can only affect this one that's highlighted in yellow, my track. I'm going to crop it with the crop tool to reveal 
reveal that background. Okay. So I first thing you're going to do is crop that. I'm also not I don't want to see the barn, so not only is the barn locked, so I don't mess with it, but I'm going to turn off the eye here and disable it. Now that disappears and it's not there. If I turn it back on, then it will be there. Don't forget if you've done that. But now I'm not worried about seeing that. And I'm probably going to delete it. I know I'm going to delete it. So it's looking through, um, and I've cropped. If I click on the arrow, then I can make this grow so I can change the size of me, but I'm not affecting the cropping. If I hit the cropping, then I go back to that original image, which had the black in it. So I crop out the black, and then I can find a place to put me and a size that pleases me. I can work with that. Let me put it here. And now the thing is I want to get rid of the green. The way this one here, the hand moves everything. Just be aware of that. All right. So I want him over there. Maybe I'll put him over here. No, I'm going to put him over here. And that's a, a decent size for the narrator. And now I want to get rid of the green. So how do I do that? I go to Visual Effects, and I go to Chroma Key. Now, on Adobe Premiere, if you're using that, Adobe Premiere has a different, um, <clears throat> different menu, but it's the same idea to remove a color. It's called Chroma Key. It's a little more complex than Adobe Premiere. For Cam but the concept is the same. For Camtasia, you grab, remove a color, and drop it down onto the track whose color you want to remove. Then you will see over here, you will see these... Uh, scale of this picture is here, so you can mess with that as you see. The opacity is here, but if I start to make the background's opacity fade, I fade too, so I'm not going to mess with the opacity. The rotation is here, so if I wanted to, I could rotate uh, this, as you can see, flip it around, flip it up and down, whoops, upside down, flip this like this. So you have a lot of stuff you can play. I'm not going to mess with that either, and you can change the position as you can see, and those numbers will change as we, um, as we move it. But the remove color thing turned on when I added remove color. And I can either add it to the track or I can add it to the section that I'm playing with on the screen, providing that that's the one that's highlighted. So I put it there. Now color comes up. It says green is the default, but that's not the same green that I used in the Digital Media Commons in the USF library. So I click on this and go to the color picker, and I select the green that I had. And you'll notice that it got rid of the green and replaced it with what was ever behind it. It makes the green basically transparent. That's how green screen or chroma key works. But it still has these weird... Um, it was these weird artifacts, as you can see, the green in my hair. And for that, you need to use tolerance. So if I make the tolerance intolerant, then what I end up with is a really icky green. And if I make it too tolerant, I disappear because there's even some green in my shirt and in my whole body. There's got a green everywhere because I'm a very green sort of person, you know green because I'm sustainable. So you just want to pull the tolerance down until you don't crop off all the hair, but you remove most of the green. And then you can work on softness as well, but that doesn't always work. Some defringing can help a little bit, but can also make a really strange effect. You can do an inversion. Oh, then there's only green and I disappear. So you can have some fun with that, but tolerance is the one that you generally use without making everything disappear. And uh, it's all about the lighting. But there I am against this miasmic stuff. And when I hit play... Module 1.1, The Mind's Eye and Nonverbal Awareness, Take 2. Week 1, Thinking Lecture 1.1. Cogito Ergo Sum, The Five Senses, The Mind's Eye, and Nonverbal Awareness. Okay, so you also want to make sure that when you are doing this, that if you're doing a fade in, you fade in the background track as well as the that's okay. that you um, put the fade in in all the tracks and make it the same length so that when you do the 
fade in, they all come in at the same time. If you don't do that, as I showed you here, then the first thing that happens is bang, you see the background, and then the character fades in on top of that background. And that's not the most beautiful way to do it, whereas if I have a fade here and a fade here and they're the same length, then when we come in, everybody comes in together. All right. Now, when I go to the start of the lecture, I'm going to start talking about things. Um, but the other thing I should do is put in a title before I do that. Two. Week one, thinking lecture 1.1. So he says week one, thinking lecture 1.1. It's nice to put in an annotation. And there's fun ways to do it. Uh, one way is just take this text thing and say, click on that. And, um, oops, I hit the wrong button. Okay. Uh, you have to go to the pointing tool, not the hand tool. Good. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to say week one lecture. Stretch it out a bit. Week one lecture. And I'm going to put that down here because it looks good. It's uh, in a sort of dark area where it shows up, right? I have the ability to change the font. So I can do that. That's kind of spectacular, isn't it? Regular, bold. Maybe I'll put in bold italic if it does that. No, it doesn't, it doesn't have anything. Yeah. All right. And I can change the color if I want. I think white, or actually, you know what a good color is usually is yellow reads pretty well, so pale yellow. And um, a pale yellow there. And then you have alignment, um, middle alignment's fine, vertical spacing and horizontal spacing sometimes affect the font, as you can see. Whoa. So. There's a default of zero is probably the best that you can work with here, but you never know. Number lock and then zero. Okay, so that's week one lecture. And then he says... Week yeah. one, thinking lecture 1.1. Cogito ergo sum. Week one lecture. And then up here, I'm going to do a fun effect. I'm going to take annotations. And it's going to be, I think, which is represented by a balloon here. So I'll do that and then type in here 1.1 cogito ergo sum. All right. I'm going to put in front of it thinking 1.1 be creative. Thinking 1.1 cogito ergo sum. Now, when I also work with this, I have the ability to. Um, to make the fill of this, uh, this bubble a gradient, which gives it some 3D-ness. I can use some opacity. That's kind of interesting. I kind of want to move it so it's not competing with those bubbles. Maybe put it over here. You can have a lot of time you can spend working on this. So it's, he's thinking about it. Cogito ergo sum. And uh, you can also see that there's this outline that you can put in if you want it. And you can change the color of the outline and the thickness. So Wow, there's a lot of thinking there. Maybe we put it like that and change the opacity of the outline as well. So yeah, I'll work with those effects. And then we have when you hit play using the space bar. Week one, thinking lecture 1.1. Cogito ergo sum, the five cents. It didn't come in when I said cogito ergo sum. And remember we had those markers before? And I can stretch it and look at it um, to get tighter in and then move back. You can see here, cogito ergo sum, we put in that marker. There's the audio waveform for cogito ergo sum. So that's where this should start. It should start. And what it does conveniently is when you put the cursor there, uh, it shows you a line so you can line things up. And that means cogito ergo sum. The it can pop in right there, although my head is moving a bit. So move it so I don't sort of wander into it. Cogito ergo sum, the five senses, the mind's eye. And the other things that the lecture talks about, the five senses, mind's eye, and nonverbal awareness. Nonverbal awareness. And you can mess with that a little bit, make it bigger, make it smaller. 
So down here, the week one lecture, we should probably keep that in for the entire thing. Let me sh move this up a little bit. Can do it. Move this up so you can see all the tracks. This track doesn't have to be nearly so big. So shrink it down a little bit. <clears throat> but you can see that <coughs> the audio lasts <coughs> until here. If I scrunch this down a bit, you can see that. And then the there's a sort of blank space where I don't talk, and then the lecture begins along that blue line where I put in that note, lecture start. So I make the images last until the audio goes, and then I fade them out. And I can do a transition, again, a fade, and put that at the end of this, and put the same fade at the end of this. I can put the fade at the beginning and put the fade at the beginning of this. That way, when it starts coming in... Two, week one, thinking lecture, 1.1. Cogito ergo sum, the five senses, the mind's eye. And I just don't like that the cogito is on the same line as thinking 1.1. So I'm going to do it like that. And by the way, I didn't mess up where this thing is located. It's still in the frame. Okay. So you can scroll in and out like that. Or you can go to fit, in which case it fits perfectly. And that's how this works then. Module 1.1, .1, the mind's eye and nonverbal awareness, take two. Week one, thinking lecture 1.1. I mean, maybe it's more coherent because he says week one thinking lecture. Then, whoa, maybe do that. Maybe I should come in here and say week one thinking lecture. Week one thinking lecture 1.1. And because I say 1.1, it probably won't, it'll make things less confusing if I put the 1.1 there. Depends on, you know, this is really you. Week one, thinking lecture 1.1. Cogito ergo sum, the five senses, the mind's eye. And since I've done week one thinking lecture 1.1, I don't need anymore to have thinking 1.1 up here because it's no longer relevant. It's already said down there. So I'm going to hit delete. It's not loading. I see what I need to do. I need to come in here and then hit backspace. And then there we go. All right. So then it fades in. Week one, thinking lecture 1.1. Cogito ergo sum, the five senses, the mind's eye, and nonverbal awareness. And then it fades out. Without an appreciation. And then the lecture begins. Now you're not subtitling this, so you don't have to write without appreciation of blah, blah, blah. What we're going to do is start start illustrating this and that fit it. So what does he say? He'll, by the way, you'll have the script available as a PDF, which you can click on in Canvas. So you can start, you don't have to be on your computer to start thinking of the images you want to assemble into this. All of the scripts um, are there. And you can see in case of... Um, Right now I've got them in Google Docs, but they'll be on Canvas for you in the course. But just so that you can see what I'm talking about. So there's these um, these lectures in here. And this is uh, week one, thinking lecture 1.1. And you see that I say in the script, without an appreciation for what psychologists call metacognition, thinking about thinking, Sustainability education has been shown to founder. See, sustainable education is thinking the key. So I actually give you a website um, that I use for this that's in the lecture, but it's not going to be on the video. Um, we're going to look for some background that talks about metacognition. And that Journal of Record article is worth having because it's going to be uh, something that you're supposed to click on. So assuming that it all works. I don't know why it's taking so long to come up. should say, let me see if I go to here and then copy it and then, oh, there it is. System education is thinking the key. All right, so it's a reference that I'm using. It's in the lecture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to snippet, snipping tool, which I always keep handy. Snipping tool is great for this. 
And this sustainability journal of record, I'm going to just select a part of this like that. And then I'm going to save this and save it as. And what I want to do is because I'm making a new, I'm making a new video for this, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this envisioning sustainability lecture 1.1 edited. And in that folder, I am going to put in another folder and I'm going to call that folder images. And then I'm going to make another folder in there. You can do this at different times, but I'm going to call sound effects. And then I'm going to make a different folder that's called music. Uh, so you can make various folders just to organize it. And I'm going to save this capture, which is uh, sustainability journal. I'm going to put that in that folder so I have it ready. Um, there don't seem to be any interesting uh, images besides the sustainable journal. You could click on that and use that. But, uh, you know, and then you can have this one here, the um, that one there, that issue, volume 8 issue 1, there's the bigger picture. So let's see if we can't grab that, save image as, and the issue cover in there. And it goes should go in the same folder, which would be on the desktop. And there, go to images. And maybe that covers, does that save images? What did it save as? A JPEG. So we're okay. All right. So now I'm going to come into my folder. And you hear me say, Without an appreciation for what psychologists call metacognition, that is, think. Well, there's a vocabulary word, so I want to flag that. Psychologists call meta. There it is right there, the waveform. You can put metacognition in there so you know where that's coming. And now, since we can see the waveform for metacognition, I'm going to take metacognition and make a uh, an adaptation for that, and I'm going to have him speak that. So I'm going to bring this in and say meta cognition which is and tell people what that is equals oops let me hit a space bar here and put in an equal sign and then put thinking about thinking all right so Called metacognition, metacognition, that is, that is thinking, thinking about, about thinking. thinking. Sustainability, Sustainability education, education is. And then after I've said that, then I want this to go away. Metacognition, metacognition that, is that is thinking, thinking about, about thinking. thinking. Sustainability, Sustainability education has been shown, has been shown to, founder. to founder. Now, here you can see that this track was only so long, so it didn't last through my entire speech. And I do want it to go up to that point, and then I'm going to change the background image. So, what I have to do here is Control C to copy it. Notice it's highlighted, right? And then Control V, and then I gotta get rid of the the fade. So I'll hit that in backspace. And now I just take that and I'm pushing it in together. But now it's too long. I want it to go thinking, thinking about, about thinking. thinking. Sustainability, Sustainability education, education has been shown, been shown to, to founder. Shown to founder. And then I'm gonna pull this back so it only lasts to that word there. And I've extended about, it about thinking. thinking. Sustainability, Sustainability education, education has been shown, been shown to founder. founder. Only problem is it does this weird jump because it was a moving image, and I've gone from lots of things to a few things in there, so it doesn't match up exactly. Maybe what I can do is pull it to a part of the video where it kind of matches the background, and then pull it over, and Bring it there, and then where the transition is. The ability the education has been shown. To um, what I can do is I can put in a transition that is a fade between them, and then they'll fade into. Each other. The ability education has been shown to found. Yeah, but it doesn't look good. Kind of looks icky. So maybe I don't do that. Maybe what I'll do instead is come over here, 
and let's see how much movement there is in there. Sustainability, Sustainability education, education has been shown to... Maybe I'll get rid of it even earlier. Education for what psychologists call... All right, so I'm going to do is, because it doesn't match up well, I'm going to go to metacognition, and I'm going to actually end it there, and I'll bring in a different image. All metacognition, metacognition, that is, that is thinking, thinking about, about thinking. thinking. And let's just see what images are out there for metacognition. <clears throat> metacognition. And the images that are available for metacognition. I want something for the background, so I don't want anything with words in it. What is metacognition? Metacognitive approach. That's not too bad. But not this. you'll spend a lot of time looking for, hunting for good images. But that's what I mentioned is what studying is all about. Um, because now you're really going to know everything you need to know about metacognition. So for a background image, ah, there we go. That's a nice one for background image. And I will go and save that image as... Metacog, and now go to my media bin, bring that metacognition lecture one. Now that's Camtasia, but I need to put it into envisioning lecture one images. And there it is. So when I pull that in and put that behind me, you'll see it's very small. So I'm going to grab it and drag it and make it big. Make it as big as the entire screen, but you'll see that it doesn't fit quite. So I hit shift and then I can stretch it out. There's only one problem. This then gets blocked. So let me put this on this side of the brain. All right. And then we have it going for what, for what psychologists call metacognition. call metacognition. They didn't come in at exactly the same time, and that's because they're not lined up. So metacognition and this have to be lined up. And, of course, it's too abrupt, maybe, to go from one background to that, that one. Is. So that's where you put in your transition. And a ripple might be nice here. Let's see. All metacognition. That is. Now that's my computer being slow. It's called metacognition. That is, that is that's not too bad. Let's go back a little bit. Fairness. Fairness. Without, Without an appreciation for what psychologists call metacognition, that is, that is thinking about, about thinking, about sustainability, thinking. sustainability education, education has been shown, been shown to founder. Okay, it's been shown to founder. There's nothing really we need to put founder. behind founder. that. See, for, see example, for example, sustainability education. But we do have this C. For example, so here I'm going to take the background image and I can drag it. Unlike the motion image that we used before, which had a, a certain prescribed length, a picture, a static picture, can be dragged out as long as you want. So while I'm talking about metacognition theory, I might as well keep this in. And if you look at the script, which we can find here, I talk about it up until the end of this line. And then I talk about stages of thought for social and environmental impact. So I will make it last until I start that next phase. So 2015. Drawing on, Drawing the, on the latest research, research in environmental, environmental education, education we, start we start this course out by... Course out by okay, so let's go to here with it and then have it fade out. So we bring it to here and... We won't put the fade in there yet. Let's see how far we can go with this. Psychologists call metacognition, that is, thinking about thinking. Sustainability education has been shown to founder. See, for example, sustainability education. See, for example, and they're going to bring in the image from. The sustainability journal these two images here and i'm going to put the journal in first see for example and then have that come on
Education, education is thinking the key, the key an article by L. Lander in Sustainability, Sustainability the Journal of... Oh, so maybe backwards. Maybe I'm not going to use this right now. I'm going to use this and put it here. Let me make it a little smaller. Right. The Journal, the Journal of Record, record 2000. 2000. Middle education, education is thinking. Think See, for, for example, sustainability. See, for example, starts there. So bring this down to there and drop it. Is it really drop it down? There must be something weird here. It's not letting me put it. Oh, that's because I locked track three. So let me put it down in track three, which is which was locked. Still not working, maybe because it's not visible. Yeah, there we go. Now I can unlock it and I can say, see for, see for example, that should be a fade, transition, I can do a circle stretch, let's try that. See for, see for example, example, sustainability education, education is, is thinking the key, the key an article by L. Lander in sustainability. I don't want the circle out, so I get rid of that part. And it's ability, the Journal, the of, Journal, of, Journal of Record 2015. All right, so now after this, I can fade it out, and this should fade at the same time, and so I have 2015. Drawing on the All right, so see for example, example sustainability education, education is thinking the key, an article by L. Lander in sustainability, in, and that's where I want to put my mark in this journal. So I do have the picture of that journal. And I can put it over here, but I'll do a cool effect here is I'll start it out. I'll make it the same size as the image that was on the screen. And having that be the same size, although it's doing this, um, unfortunately, it's enabling canvas snapping. So let me turn off canvas snapping. And then that will let me stretch to my heart's content. So I hit shift and now I can, yeah, now that's snapping to the side. Snapping is useful when you want to align things. Snapping can get in your way when you want to do precise work like this, where you don't have something obvious to snap to. So I've put this on top of it, right? So there it is. And now that I have it, and I want it to grow to the point where it will cover the screen. So with this highlighted, that is this uh, that I placed on top of here, what I'll do is I'll go to Animations, and I'll go to Custom Animation, and drop it down on that track alone. And you see a little arrow appears there, so I'm going to bring it to about halfway. And that red part of the arrow is the target. So when we get to that red part, I want this to have grown to be big enough that it can be easily read, maybe even bigger. I want it to get like huge. Okay, like that. And that's going to be, then it's going to grow. It's going to start out there and then it's going to grow up wherever this arrow is. If I want to make it grow slower, then I would make it longer. If I wanted to go faster, I would make it shorter. And then what I have is an article by L. Lander in Sustainability, Journal of, Journal of Record 2015. Boom. But I want that to fade as well at the same rate. So I'm going to go to Transitions and drag a fade and drop it on that's the same length of the others. And so now they're in Sustainability, Journal, Journal of Record 2015. Drawing on, Drawing the, on the latest research in environmental, in environmental education, education so now I just want a generic background for the latest research in generic in, in education that I can leave for a while. And when you look at the um, latest research, we start with the course out by helping students gain an awareness of an appreciation for the way they think and the origin pattern historically and evolutionarily. And I'm going to be talking about the thinking thing. So an image that kind of conjures up thought, for me, that might be some kind of brain image, but if I want it to be motion, you can go to YouTube, and when you're in YouTube, you can, I think maybe the best way to do this, actually, there's YouTube apps, 
Creator Academy. You go to YouTube Creator Academy and there's Creator Resources. And in Creator Resources, Learn and Connect, Next Up Support and Guidance, Creators for Change, there's usually Creator Academy for creators, artists, or in Creator Academy catalog, perhaps. Creator Resources, Creators for Chain, Academy, Support and Guidance. Somehow, sometimes it's really hard to find that. So I apologize, but you may go through the same frustration. So if I go to um, Video Backgrounds YouTube, then Motion Backgrounds, then it brings you into a part of Creator Academy. And you've got all these different possible backgrounds. Or actually, that's not YouTube's. More from YouTube. Free backgrounds, YouTube channel, Action World. There's supposed to be bunches of them on YouTube. Because they have, I mean, there are ones that you can just simply find, but there's a whole thing of them in YouTube. YouTube for artists, maybe. Resources. Resources. Artist resources. Getting started. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm just going to pause things right now and I'll find it for you. Okay, I spoke too soon. Um, in Creator Studio, YouTube has the thing. You type it in as studio.youtube.com. Um, what you get is Creator Studio. And in Studio, there is an audio library that you can use to get um, free music and free sound effects, but not video. While we're here, in YouTube's studio, we might as well uh, get something that's appropriate. No, that's not right. I love this trick on the though. That's not what I want for a feel for this, for thinking. Really simple feeling. Ooh, I don't like that at all. Um, the mood you can select. So I'm going to take a, a calm mood and see what comes up with that. And then the instrument that I'd like would be, actually acoustic guitar might be rather nice for that. And duration, I want to go for the longest duration possible. Let's see what that does to this. There's only two for that, see so healing. my beer sounds like. Okay, that's not at all appropriate. This one's not bad, so I'm going to take that one and download it. I'll just go back and um, change to, let's say, strings and see what it comes up with. There's one called Healing. Maybe that was the one we just did. Yeah, that's the one we just did, but there's one called Video Music. Um, kind of like that. Eastern kind of feel. That's nice. All right, maybe we'll try that one. Um, and as for that video background that I talked about, then you just have to look for YouTube motion backgrounds and we'll find something in here there's no copyright animation motion backgrounds and there's a bunch of them that's sort of like the one that we already used um, that's kind of like the one we already used and we'll pause here so there are artist resources but there are not um, 
videos. You'll want to look for free videos uh, here and find the one that you like for a video loop. And then um, if you want to download it, then you have uh, an option. I use 4K Downloader and 4K to video to MP3 is there, but 4K Downloader, I guess I haven't Maybe I haven't installed it into this machine yet. So let's um, get a way to bring videos in. And that would be 4K Downloader. Should be the official site for them. Get the video. Yeah, have that come down. And you have to wait a few minutes for that. So, yes, so you will want to find some background videos that are not copyright, just restricted. And then you can use them. But the audio library is available there. In Chrome. And this YouTube studio is what has these comment subtitles. Gives you a lot of good tips. The dashboard is your own channel's videos, but audio library is the one where you'll get the audio. And there's also, while we're looking at the sound effects, so at some point if you want to put in things like a uh, aggressive zombie snarls, for example, they're there, and an air mailer, airplane. So you can find some cool stuff there. Animal growls. Right. Bark. So that's a source for you to find. You can search sound effects, like if you want the sound of an explosion, then you put that in and you'll get various explosions, like glass windows. Uncuttered nighting. Right? So you have that, or you can get the sound of uh, waves on a beach, for example, and water splashes or waves crashing. So you can use that. Let's see if a 4K downloader has downloaded, then I'm going to launch it and accept it and put it in. And 4K, let's launch it. 4K then will give you the ability to paste a link. So when I go to that uh, rather cool, oh, I must have ended that. Let me go back to the one that's vintage overlay. Didn't want that one. Huh, where's my star field? Clean blue. That's kind of cool, but that's not as good as the star field that I had before. Um, star field motion backgrounds free. And then find, there's the one I was looking at, the nebula one. That's the one that I like. So you'd go there and you would go to share and you would copy the URL. And then you'd go to 4K downloader and paste the link and it'll parse it and it'll parse it. it takes a while then it comes there you decide what you want 480p works fine for me and then you download the clip choosing the folder I'm going to keep it in their video um, the folder that they create and then it downloads it so maybe I'll make it normal quality to save time and say download and I won't bore you with this I'll pause okay so now what we're gonna do because the video file has downloaded is I'm going to find it and insert it into the program so I go and I click on the plus sign say import media now I have to find the folder that I put it in and usually with 4k downloader It'll be in the videos folder and then the 4K downloader folder. And there it is. That's the one about the starry sky that 
took so long. So I'll bring that in, and it's a big file, so it takes a while to load up in the media bin. It's taking way too long. There it is. And again, we're working around here, so let me zoom in a bit. And we have Lander, this brain image Journal of Record 2015. disappear into black. And then I start talking, and you see this new waveform here where I'm talking. So I'm going to drag the file underneath the green screen, and I'm going to start it from black. And of course, I have to enlarge it so that it occupies the back of everything. And I've got my stars, but I don't want it to come in very abruptly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my transition and I'm going to let it fade. But maybe I'll do an interesting dissolve with it. So I'll take that dissolve. I like playing with the different transitions. Drawing on the latest research in, in environmental education, we start this course out by helping you gain an awareness of and appreciation for the way you think and the origins of thought patterns. Historic, both historically and evolutionarily. When I was a graduate student, I created my stages of thought for social and... Okay, so then I begin to talk about my thinking rubric. And what I'm going to do here, which will be interesting, is I'm going to cut, uh, cut this up, as you see, into two pieces. I did that by clicking on the, uh, uh, on the file and then pressing on this button here that says split. I could have used the S key to split. And what I'll do when I get over to when I start talking is I'm going to zoom in on me and make it a jump cut to a thing where I'm sprite in the center. So we've seen me here. And the origins of thought patterns and historic, both historically and... I need to get rid of that. I need to do that. Okay. Evolutionarily. When I was a graduate student, I... The only thing is I think it comes in a little too late. So what I'm going to do, and this is hard to do unless you really zoom out. I'm going to grab this one and pull it back. Sometimes it doesn't work. I'm going to pull this back and pull this back. And let me then zoom out again. And let's get that jump in to be about halfway in, during the silence. And that way, when we click, it'll be... When I was a graduate... Well, that comes in too, too early for me. Let's bring it in a little bit more like that. And then... When I was a graduate student, I created my stages of thought for social and environmental impact. And what I'm going to do here, which would be an interesting effect, is I'm going to take me, <coughs> and I'm going to move me, using the animation, because I'm gesturing to the other side of the screen. So I'm going to go to animations here, and I'm going to use a custom animation and drag it onto here, and he'll start talking, and we'll stretch this out. And throughout this, I'm going to move my image slowly onto this side as a keyframe. So now, as you can see, it'll jump to me being there, and then it'll move. And that will make an interesting transition. When I was a graduate student, I created my stages of thought for social and environmental impact. All right, so stages of thought and environmental impact. So again, we go back to the script. And let's, um, let's add a tab in here. We're going to go to... Uh, I guess I have to open up Gmail to make this work. Hold on a second. So we'll go to the script again, and here is that. Copy that. Come back to our video. Mm -hmm. Come back to the video, and then I can insert it here as its own track. But the way to do that is to put in an annotation and put that annotation, let's say, this here, and put that like that, and then paste it in, and then... Oh, 
There's two ways to do this. You can put this on top, or we can put it on the bottom. If we want to put it on the bottom, we can still insert a track above this one here and put it underneath my hands so that when I grow it a bit, my hands are sort of blocking it in front. So it fills up more of it, but then I'm in the way. Or I can put it in front of the hands. That is the option that we have. So I think it's actually interesting behind the hand. We'll see how the hands move. It had thinking, imagining the past and the future, and making them appear present in the mind. Yeah, I kind of like it behind the hands because it's in front, then it kind of looks bizarre. But you can see if you lift it up, then it's in front of the hand. And the hands start waving behind it. It had thinking, imagining the past and the future, and making them appear present in the mind. Thinking out okay, loud, maybe we'll leave speaking, it there. singing, dancing, gesturing, thinking out loud. And we will. Um, this is me recording. So then we can stretch it out more. And you play a lot with this stretch and squash thing because you can look and see like where are we in the uh, where are we in the timeline and it looks like it's going to be thinking out even louder radio thinking out even louder thinking out loudest virtual reality immersive 3d gaming theme parks and then finally thinking manifested architecture and design the creation of tools and the creation of civilizations architecture and design the creation of tools so I think we want to leave it up till at least here. Architecture and design. Virtual reality, immersive 3D gaming, theme parks, and then finally thinking manifested. So we'll let it reach out to about here. And then we will bring it out. And we should also put in a little mark there so we know where to go. And now, you take this and bring it out there, and it shows that I created my stages of thought for social and environmental impact. It had thinking, imagining the past and the future, and making them appear present in the mind. Thinking out loud, speaking, singing, dancing, gesturing. I just don't like the fact that my body is moving too far so since we have it in front let's move me over a bit so it ends the animation is there then my shoulders come off. impact it had thinking imagining the past and the future making them appear present in the mind thinking out loud speaking singing dancing gesturing thinking out louder writing drawing painting sculpting thinking out even louder radio film and television and then thinking out loudest virtual reality, immersive 3D gaming, theme parks, and then finally thinking manifested, architecture. And then that should, of course, go throughout that. So this should be removed. This marker isn't necessary. And really, we want to bring it out to the end of it. Design, the creation of tools, and the creation of civilizations. Now note that at any stage, one can jump immediately. And there's going to be another piece of text I want to put in here that I want to blend in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is have these words. This is an interesting uh, effect called behaviors. So what I'll do with behaviors is this this thing called um, explode. So let's see what happens with words when I do that. Thought for social and environmental impact. Boom. It had That's pretty cool, but of course it comes in too fast. So for the in implode, let me change the speed and make it slower. As you can see, that'll be kind of cool. And then when it goes out, let's see what happens. When I was a graduate student, I created my stages of thought for social and environmental impact. It had thinking. In and that's too slow because it's on the word thinking you want it to be in. So make sure that by thinking it's in, and let's see if that works. Social and environmental impact. It had thinking, imagining the past and the future. It's okay, but really it should come in by the word thinking. Had. It had, and then we have thinking. So you can play with the speed and make sure it comes in by that point. And then, and environmental impact. It had thinking, there imagining goes, that's the past better. and the future, making them appear on the way out. out. Finally, thinking manifested, architecture and design, the creation of tools and the creation of civilizations. Civilizations, and then it should go out.
tools in the creation of civilizations. Right. Now note that at any And of course we can make it go out a little bit slower if we want to. Same thing with the out. You click on the out part and change the speed. And then finally, the creation of tools and the creation of civilizations. Now note that at any stage cool. one can jump immediately. And now for the next part, let's get this to save. So many tricks you can do when you're editing and have a whole lot of fun with it. So we go to the next part. Note that at any stage is actually written here. Um, so we'll take up to the, take that. I think that's an important thing to make. And put that piece of text in. And that I'm going to make as a, as a thought balloon. So I'll have some fun with that. Make me sing this note. And put that in. Note that. Make it bigger like that. The color, do we like the color? The color here, we can make it from solid to a gradient. We can change the opacity a little bit. And we can change the color. There's a color picker. We could use that. If we do that, then we are... Maybe we do it as the color scheme of the shirt behind, and it matches the shirt. That's not a bad idea. Maybe change the opacity a little bit more. Maybe this is where we take out the gradient, keep it solid. And yeah, that's not too bad. So, thinking manifest. Now, note that at any stage one can jump. Of course, he says the word note earlier. Now, note. And that's when it should come in. And here we can use. A different behavior. We can have note be a pop-up. Let's see what that does. Drag that on there. Civilizations. Now note that at any stage one can jump immediately to manifested thinking, but in order to get cooperation from other human beings, some form of thinking out loud is necessary since we are not yet telepathic beings. <laughs> Our thesis is that technologies amplify how loud we can think and hence how great an effect or impact So we have the numbers no, coming out. At any stage, one can jump. That's called a pop-up, and he says jump. Maybe jump is not the right one. I thought maybe it is. Maybe it is. We could use it. If we look at behaviors, there is a pop-up, and then there is, um, he says jump, but there's a pop-up. I used that. There's a fly-in, a sliding, a scale. There's jump and fall. That might be interesting instead. So let's see if we drop that on there. Now it's got two, pop-up and jump and fall. You can see over here on the right. So I'm going to take out pop-up and make it jump and fall. Let's see what that does. Now no, that at any stage one can jump. And then we use it on the word jump. So we'll, um, we'll go to animations. Uh, not animations, sorry, behaviors. And put it back to explode, but maybe we would go to fly in. Let's see what that one looks like. In envisioning sustainability. And in it's not bad because it goes over the word envisioning sustainability. The word ends there. We want it to end just toward the end of the word so we can make the speed a little bit faster. And um, the course in envisioning sustainability. And in it we explore the development of and encourage the application of what I call state now the stages of will come in. I don't know if going out makes sense. Or the development of and encourage. Although it is kind of cool, but you can go to the out and look at the out and say, well, I don't want it to fly out. In fact, I want it to fade out. So it would be that. Sustainability. And in it, we explore the development of and encourage the application of what I call state. And then we can make stages is here. And we can mark that marker, stages. Um, and now, stages, <coughs> stages, stages, stages. So we go back to the script and find the words that are there, stages for social, and that is, of course, in quotes, because it's what I call it, and copy that. And then go back here 
and it's what I call, he says, so therefore the annotation would be some balloon of what I call. And there we go. Can make it a little bit bigger. And this purple is nice against the background. You do want to make it a little bit opacity, opaque, so I mean more transparent. So that's kind of cool. And let's see how that comes in. What I call stages of thought for social and environmental impact. And my hands get all over that, so let's move that over. Stages of thought for social and environmental impact. It's a course where thinking. I'm going to let that fade out before this audio begins. And so here, take the transition and put the fade on the back end of this. Impact. It's a course where. And then it fades out. Okay. And save. And of course, there's keywords here. To sustained action. Like sustained action that we should put in. You can either get those from the script or you can type them in. But there are key concepts. So what we're really trying to do in this is we're trying to, um, to annotate. That's why we use annotations. We're trying to annotate, illustrate the key core concepts, Ali, principles, and vocabulary. Ali, we want to change this to a capital S Ali, and a capital A. And even put in an exclamation point. And then say, leads to sustained action. And of course, move this over like that. To sustained action. You see, we human beings have actually been living sustainably. And of course, it's, it's all right for it to jump in sustained because action. it's a powerful thing, sustained action. But when it does, when it leaves, it shouldn't just disappear. That's where it should fade out or have some kind of uh, behavior. Um, maybe scale here would be interesting and just scale it out. So let's see what scale does. If we take that and we make the in actually do nothing. We have to somehow get rid of the in. There's none. Okay, so no in during nothing but on out. You do a shrink out. So we have it just pop on. Sustained action. You see, we, we human beings, beings have, have actually, actually been, been living, living sustainably. Sustainable. That's not too bad. Yeah. Okay, so now comes the fun part where we actually start putting in some, um, some illustrations. So you listen to the script. We human beings have actually been living. Let me turn this up a little bit. And sustainably and engaging in sustainable actions for far longer than we have lived unsustainably. So what image would we put, we ask ourselves, to we've been living sustainably for far longer. So that conjures up for me an image of a hunter-gatherer population in the Pleistocene. And here's where if you're doing the, the readings, you will have a lot of background knowledge to be able to uh, to be able to illustrate this. So that's where the readings become very, very important. Um, so we look at some of these uh, here, and the uh, woolly mammoth, of course, is an interesting one because it immediately evokes the idea of a long, long time ago. And so we may as well use one. The question is which one? And thing is, I like woolly mammoths, so I'm not necessarily keen on having images of them being killed. Whereas if we have that one where people are crawling to kill, there's a lot of interesting images. This one here with the dogs, that's pretty interesting. Um, and then there is a tusk of a woolly mammoth, so we don't have to show the violence of it, but we do get the idea that this is a long time ago. So I think I'm going to choose that image, and um, here I'm going to, it's got its copyrights, we're okay with there. I'm going to take that and Caveman Wolf and save that in the images, and then go back to here and bring it in. Now you can be gathering these images just looking at the script itself so that you have them pre-prepared. Now, you can put the image over, but I sometimes like to put it under. That's the value of having a couple of tracks. 
Um, so you've got the background track, and then you've got a track for images that go in the background, and then you've still got foreground images. Oops, I'm going to do that. Hit Control Z. Um, maybe it's good now at this point to lock this track so that my body doesn't move. But oops, and that should be locked too. So let's go down and lock that background image for now. And then when we click on it, all we'll have is that. That way you can move around without covering this. So there we go. And engaging in Maybe pull this back and start it a little earlier. So that it goes. We human beings have actually been living. And let's get the thing um, going out as the image comes in. actually been living sustainably. And it comes in too quickly, obviously. So let's also use a transition and say living sustainability. Maybe we want to do a page roll on that. So let's see how that looks. Actually been living sustainably and engaged. Mm, not good. I don't like that. What about a... Ah, well, you know, the, the ripple effect suggests time long ago, so we can just... We can just I've actually that. been living sustainably there we go. and engaging in sustainable actions for far longer than we have lived unsustainably. That's why we're still here, all 7.7 .7 billion of us. Now, it says all 7.7 .7 billion of us. Um, we That's could... we're still here. And take this and dissolve to... Human population. Let's see the human population curve. And I spelled it wrong. And go to, let's see what the best one is here. We are here, world total, human population. This one's good because it shows from the uh, first year after the birth of Christ to 2050. shows how quickly we've grown. Otherwise, we could look at the human growth curve by the year AD. There's this one here, but that's in increments of 1 billion. Here's growth throughout history. This is a good one. So you learn a lot when you're studying by looking for the right image that really would fit your narrative. And so if we do this, then we would save this image, world population growth. And you'll want to then take the actual URL and make sure that you save that, uh, that image address because these are owned images. And so go into your go into here and <clears throat> you can then so we can uh, then add that image I was showing you that you can then take the um, take the annotation and I don't know if this is always necessary just you're supposed to know that you should do it so that that URL from the pit from the um, from the actual picture is found if somebody needed to find it again that you give credit oh. she says she made it hmm. so get that in there but then we will add the media and then bring that in and grow it. And again, the question, do you want it on top or underneath? I think the URL should go on top so that you can read it, obviously. But this, it would be nice if it was just underneath it so that the corner, the arm can sweep over the corner and it looks a little more, uh, you can make it a little bigger without obscuring the movement of the of the actor and then all 7.7 .7 billion of us. okay so we can go all 7.7 .7 billion um, now you may ask like why wouldn't I put this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
So I, I make it a bit bigger. You're probably wondering oh, why don't we just make it the whole background. But you see, if you did, then it would be really hard to see what's going on under here. So um, I like to have two background images, the general background or thematic image, and then the image that specifically describes it. And you can still then throw in other images if you want. So for example, it might be nice to um, to pop in an image of overpopulation here and come in here and put overpopulation and go to images. Wonderful that we have Google now to find all these. And then, yeah, overpopulation. Um, and actually, that's pretty cool. 50 shades of overpopulation. That's not bad. Let's try that. And let's save the image as and population article. And just to save time, I'm not going to take the URL, but you should. So I say that officially. Okay, so we go here and bring in overpopulation, 50 shades of. I'm sure that you can always find it by just typing in 50 shades of overpopulation and shrink it down. And when you hit the shift key as you shrink it, you can distort it as well. And so now we put 50 shades of overpopulation in there. And that shows up. All right, so that's up on the top of the track. And uh, the URL, they should all be lined up, actually. And then we can remove this ripple and put the ripple in again. We'll put it over the two so that it ripples from one to the other. That's why we're still here, all 7.7 .7 billion of us. Um, but now, of course, you've got to do that same effect on your other tracks. Otherwise, they'll just pop in instead of coming in. And you also may need to shrink these down to the same size so they come in at the same speed, no matter how slowly they go out. So Why we're still here, all 7.7 .7 billion. And it didn't come in right because it actually starts back here on this track. So you're better off pulling these tracks back, making the effect, keep that there, drag, stretch it in back here, keep these effects lined up, and then they will come in at the same time. Still here, all 7.7 .7 billion of us, twice as many as when I was in high school. And it's how we've got... But, as you can see, I move over to the left and I end up covering that, and that's kind of inconvenient. So maybe we... Ah, this is where it would be nice to do an animation. So let's have it come in at around the same size as the one that... Uh, the one that we were working with before. So that comes in like that. But then as it moves forward and his arm starts to cover it, as you can see happening here, then we will put in our animation and drop that onto it and drag this until the arm starts moving. And at that point, we'll want this to have shrunk. So there. So the animation would look like this. Here, all 7.7 .7 billion of oh, us. It didn't do it. That's not good. Let's try it again. We will take that image and put it behind. And then we will click on this, turn it red, and then, ah, because I've, I'm on the wrong track, that's why. Let me get rid of this effect. There you go. And instead put the effect on world population growth. That's the one that we wanted to move. And as the frame, as the person goes over it, then we will shrink it up. There we go. So it looks something like this. Well, here, all 7.7 .7 billion of us, twice as many as when I was in high school. And it's how we've gotten as far as we have. So we can have all of this last two. It's gotten as far as we have. And so you have to drag everything out to there, drag everything out to there, and drag everything out to there, and then put a ripple 
effect. I can find it. Where did it go? Ah, we're on transitions. We'll put that at the end of this. And now, how we've gotten as far as we have. Our unique evolutionary process resulted in an animal that can both think and do. So our unique evolutionary process results in an animal. Let's find a picture of human evolution. And that's the classic one there. Shows brain size. Or we can be somewhat funny about it and we can use that uh, the one where human beings are turning to computer users. Which one is that? The one where <laughs> the evolution of zombie man. That could be funny. Have fun with this. That's the important thing. So I'm going to use that one because I think it's funny. And come back in. Result in an animal. Go to media. Import media. And bring this in. And say. That can both think. process resulted in an animal. Here's resulted in an animal. So if we come in where he starts saying resulted. Evolutionary process result. And result in an animal and put our transition so that we can maybe have it come up from nowhere. Resulted in an animal. And that doesn't look good. So let's undo that. How about page turn? Resulted in an animal that can. Not nice either. How about a dissolve? It's our cloud like dissolve. Resulted in an animal. That... Let's make it a little slower. Let's move it back a little bit. Evolutionary process resulted in. This evolutionary process. That'd be nice. Resulted, and then we end up with the animal as the reveal. Evolutionary process resulted in an animal that can both think and do. Make it a little bigger. That can both think and do. As the Dean of Patel College of Global Sustainability is fond of saying to incoming students, we at USF see ourselves And here we want to quote, so we'll put this one and say, quote, we at USF see ourselves as, what does he say? USF see ourselves as both a think tank and a do tank. We engage. So there we go. At USF, see ourselves as both. A At USF, see ourselves as both a think tank and a do tank. Exclamation point. Okay. And we can make this better by highlighting that's a and a do tank like that. Or maybe we go like this, but we pull it back like that. Okay, so we at, we USF, at USF see ourselves, see ourselves as, both as both a think tank and, and a do tank. tank. We engage, we engage in, what in what we call, we call practice. And I've <clears throat> I will put an arrow here because I'm and I'm going to make this praxis. What we call, call praxis. That should come on, and the reveal is right when his hands go there. 
Praxis. Praxis. Came in late. Paul Praxis. Paul Praxis. Mm -hmm. The place, the place where, where theory, thinking, thinking and, practice and practice doing come together. Come together. And you'll see. You see, my hands went out of frame there. Let me unlock this track. I made a mistake, and I may not be able to do anything with it here because when I did the cropping, I cropped it too tight. And even if I open the crop up here, because the file I gave you was already cropped, it's going to crop my hand. So I can't do anything with that. It's going to have to be the way it is. Thinking, thinking and practice. And practice do but maybe I can make up for that by putting a block here and make this practice, practice doing. doing. Place the place where theory, where theory, theory is actually what the word should be. And have it be theory. Practice, practice doing. doing. And it seems like what we should do is go praxis and then, and I have a much better idea for what to do here. I can come in here and cut this once I've done the reveal. So I go to my track and I make a cut and I'll be theory and I'm bringing them together. 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 But that, should but that shouldn't be unique. unique. And I'll take it here and cut it. So let me see how far I want to go with this. But that shouldn't be unique. It's what Homo sapiens do best. I'll cut it there. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this, of course, is I'm going to go to my animations and do my custom animation and drop it on here. And let's slide this to the middle at that point so that you have the reveal. Place, Place where theory, theory thinking. thinking. And bring that up to what block the yes. hand. Practice, and practice doing. doing. Make it a little bigger. Theory, theory thinking, thinking and practice, and practice doing. doing. And let's make another one of these and copy it and bring it up here and change it its location and then change it to because we're doing an important definition here <laughs> say practice <coughs> doing Place the place where theory, theory thinking, thinking and, and practice doing, doing comes to And then, of course, because that is off screen, when we get to here, thinking, thinking and, practice and practice doing, we can move it again, put your animation in, and put it where you want the start of the animation to be. And it should start, oops, not there. I want to start it. Start it here. So we have thinking and practice. And then as he pulls it, it should come in. But that red dot, it should be pulled all the way in by then. And the same with this one here. So that the pull is into here. Let's make this right that moves like that. There we go. Let's see what this looks like. The place where the place, the place where theory, where theory think now here of course it should jump in much quicker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back. And I'm going to add another custom animation into here. And when he starts to reach for it is when this is going to end up there. But when it's back here, 
click on the end of it. There we go. I can move it off the screen. Gosh. And hopefully, Hold up real quick. see how that plays. Our praxis, the place, the place where theory, theory thinking, thinking, and practice, and practice doing, doing come together. Come together. But, that but that shouldn't be. And keep this there. And then it goes out. It's a little awkward still. Our praxis, the place, the place where, where theory, theory thinking. Because my hand was got cut off there. So maybe what I'll do is move this to the fingers, but I will do instead of a move, because I don't have to do a move at all, I can do, let's do it a different way. I'll do the move as a blend and go into transitions and do a fade instead. The place, the place where, where theory, theory. bring it in. Oops. Place where, place where theory. theory. The hand grabs it there. So by there it should be up. The place, the where, place theory. where theory. Still not doing it. Place where theory. theory th These are tricky things when you start getting into um, getting into these subtle effects. Axis. The place, the place where, where theory, theory thinking, thinking, and practice and doing, practice doing come, together. come together. It's a cool effect. It's not working Pra-axis. quite the right. The place, the place where, where theory. The place where. Th yeah, his fingers are still going to go out. The place where theory out. thinking and practice, and practice right. doing come together. Come together. But that, but that shouldn't be unique. However, we should also put a fade on the very beginning of this. Place where, Place theory, where theory, thinking, and, and practice. And we really want to make this come in later. Be thinking, be thinking and, and practice, practice doing, doing come together. Come together. But that, but that shouldn't be unique. Be unique. It's, what it's what homo sapiens, sapiens do, best. do best. At least, At we, least think. we think we do. And of course here, do, best. do best. At least, At we, least think. we think we do. And what we do with that jump is we come into a classic full face shot. That shouldn't, that shouldn't be, be unique. unique. It's what homo, it's what homo sapiens, sapiens do best. Do best. At, least At least we think we do. And we can move it over a little bit more. At least, At least we think we do. And maybe we should let this last all the way until that cut. So you do a lot of experimentation when you're doing this. Thinking and, thinking and practice, practice doing, doing come, together. come together. But that shouldn't, but that shouldn't be, unique. be unique. It's what homo, it's what homo sapiens, sapiens do best. best. At, least, At we least we think we do. So we need, so to, we need explore to explore how the, how the act, act of thinking leads to acting. To act. Move him up a little bit more. I do like that, so the hands are in better. Homo sapiens, homo sapiens do, do best. best. At, least, At least we think we do. So we need, so to, we need explore to explore how the act, how the act of thinking leads, leads to acting. And to do that, and to do that we, want to we want to take you on a journey along the evolutionary, along the evolutionary pathway, pathway from thinking to action, to action and, investigate and investigate how envisioning... How oh, there's a good one there. I'll take, take you on a journey along the evolutionary pathway from thinking... When we get from thinking, let's cut it again. And now let's shrink him down. And let's go from thinking. Let's put in a Annotation here, and we'll say from, and then we'll put in another one, which we'll just copy and paste. And then copy it again. 
cutting and paste. And let's see if we go investigate how envisioning sustainability in the mind's eye, thinking about way from thinking to action. Thinking to action. And it wasn't doing at all, it was action. Very pathway, Very pathway from, from thinking, thinking to, action. to action. And investigate, and investigate how, how it seems like we need the word two, don't we? Bring this up, bring this up, and let's copy this and then paste it and change it to two. Pathway, Pathway from thinking, from thinking to, action. to action. And invest. And it's probably good to grab these and do some kind of effect with them. Let me actually move. Ooh, didn't need to do that. Let me move this one up and select them and go to behaviors. And what happens if we do a shift? I don't know. We'll put it on all of these and see what that does. From thinking, From thinking to action, to action. and investigate how envisioning sustainability in the mind's eye, thinking about sustainability, leads to real-world, on-the-ground manifestations of sustainable practice and public perception of sustainability. Okay. Very pathway from thinking to action, and investigate how envisioning sustainability in the mind's eye, thinking about sustainability. And then here I just want to put in something where I say... How does thinking about sustainability lead to action? I think I'll try to be a little um, balanced about this. I will say, how does thinking about sustainability Put that there? And I think here we are, he's thinking about it. Then go over here and oops and put this up like that. Lead to what? Leads to, leads real, to world real world on the ground, on the ground manifestations, manifestations sustainable of sustainable practice. practice. Let's say lead to manifesting reality. doesn't have to, you don't always have to say exactly what the script says. You can simplify. Let's not get pedantic about it. Sustainability leads to... Bring it back. Mind's, Mind's eye. eye. Thinking about, Thinking about sustainability. sustainability. Let's do it like that. Leads to leads real, to world, real on world, world on the ground manifestation. manifestation. And again, you can go to behaviors and look for a, a reveal in this case. Do the same reveal here. Ability. Ability. Leads to leads real, to real world, world on the ground, on the ground manifestation. manifestation. I don't like that pulsing thing. Let's get rid of that. That's too much. And instead, go for a leads to leads real to world, world on the ground, ground manifest. One thing, of course, is the color just is awful. So let's go again for something where we do not bad to um, to use a piece of the clothing for this. And there we go. Leads to, leads to real, real world, world on the ground, on the ground manifestations of sustainable practice and public, and public perception. perception. The only thing is you can't really see that they're thought balloons, so that's where we can um, we can use the outline and make the thickness sort of obvious there. So 
Let's see what that does. Leads to, leads to real world on the ground, on the ground manifestations of sustainable practice and public, and public perception of sustainability. of sustainability. And finish it like that. And we do need to put a fade of some kind in. So we will do, in this case, the dissolve. That should work. Put the dissolve in here. And then. Sustainability leads, leads to real world on the ground, ground manifestation. It's getting better. It's just a little bit bigger. Okay. Leads to leads real to world, world on the ground manifestations of sustainable practice and public perception. Bring this over because my body drifts. Leads to real world on the ground manifestations of sustainable practice and public perception of sustainability. So what does that, so what does that path look like? Well, first, first we, develop we develop the ability, the ability to, think. to think. Right, so there's a lot more to go, but I think that you now have enough examples of putting in text, putting in images, putting in illustrations, putting in animations, that you can handle the rest by yourself. Right, this is a very long video, and it takes a lot of time to do this, so be forewarned. But I think by watching through this, you're getting the idea of how long these things actually take and look at that that little barn is still there which we have to go back and, and get rid of we don't really want that barn what on earth is that barn doing there by barn okay and so that's how it's going to start module 1.1 the, the mind's eye and non-verbal awareness two. take two week one, week one thinking, thinking lecture 1.1 1. 1. 1. okay so you watch it and you keep doing that and then you get all the way to the end and you'll have a finished video and when all of it's populated, you'll go up to share and to local file, and then you'll hit the next button and it will render it. You give it a name and you tell it where to go and then you hit finish and then it will start rendering it out to an MP4 that you can send to anybody. So I hope that that was useful for you. I know it's like watching paint dry. It's a difficult, long <laughs> process. You can budget about uh, one or two hours per minute of finished video. Like we've only gotten so far to, um, how many minutes was that? Uh, from about six when we started to about nine. So that's really about three minutes in about three hours or so. So it does take a uh, about an hour per minute or more. It can take two hours a minute. But have fun with it. That's the important thing. And manipulate the person in this position and all that stuff. All right? And make sure you save a lot. All right, so happy trails.